Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jen Xie. I'm the CEO of Cryptape, which is a blockchain startup based in China. And I was a Ethereum developer in, in Vitalik's research team. But now I'm fu fully committed to our, uh, our own blockchain product named Sita, which is a permission blockchain. And today I want to share with you um, <coughs> The most important design, the most important design choice of CIDA, and why it makes CIDA unique. And the topic is um, scalable blockchain for enterprise, which is a scalable solution you can use today. Um, with the advent of Ethereum, we can build decentralized application very easily on, on Ethereum. And in Cryptape, we provide provide all kinds of consultancy services to our customers, include um, notary crypto assets to settlement supply chain. We build all kinds of prototypes, but the most question we've been asked by our customers is, is the solutions you build for us scale? What if, what if the, what if the blockchain application becomes super success and there are a lot of our users using it. Is the solution can handle that much users, right? But all, all, of, not, uh, all of us know um, blockchain has its own scalability problem because in blockchain we need to replicate all the, we're, we need to replicate the transactions as many copies as the nodes in the network and broadcast the replicates to all the nodes and all the nodes need to process the same task again and again and again and then vote. So no matter how many nodes in the network, you, um, the, whole, the whole network, the, the throughput of the whole network is the same as a single node. You can, you can increase the network's throughput or uh, by simply uh, adding nodes into the network. So how do we solve the problem? There, there are actually two solutions. The hard way is what Ethereum or Vitalik is doing now is scale out by sharding, right? What if, what if we don't replicate each transaction that many times? What if we split transaction into groups and we also split nodes into groups and each group of nodes only need to process a, a subgroup of transactions and each group of nodes only need to maintain a substate of the blockchain. That's, that, that's what sharding doing, but sharding is hard. If you, if you, have, uh, if you listen to Vitalik's talk yesterday, you know, there is a dilemma in, 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 the, in, in the scalability problem. You can, you, can reach, uh, you can reach decentralization, scalability, and security at the same time. So in, in sharding, the most hard part is security. How can you do it in a safe way? So it's very hard, and Ethereum team is working hard on this, and maybe we and we don't have it today. The other way, or the easier way, is scale up, right? If the whole, if the throughput of the whole network is the same as a single node in the network, what if we just upgrade the node in the network? We can use a workstation, even mainframe, instead of a laptop to run a node then the, the throughput of the whole system will naturally increase, right? That's the solution promoted by some big names in this industry. If it's so good, why, why don't Ethereum just use this solution? The problems of scale-up solution is obvious. If you, if you want to build a very decentralized network, 
you have to make the cost of running a node very low. If you, if, it, you, if you need a mainframe to run a full node, a, any individual cannot afford that cost. And you may, you may also need very good network condition for that full node, right? So the cost is very high for scale, uh, for, for a um, main, uh, mainframe node. And the other prob problem is centralization. If the, if the cost is so high, then any individual cannot afford it. Then only people with a lot of money can run a full node in the network. So the solution is not suitable for a public chain. But for, for Cryptape or for a permission blockchain, the context is different, right? The users in the network are all enterprises. They, they can afford the cost. And in a permission blockchain, we can set a barrier for, for enter. So if you, if you want to join to be a validation node, we can ask you to buy some minimum hardware to become a validation node. So scale up solution can be used in permission blockchain. And we have a even better way to do that. How? We don't need a mainframe. That's not the, the, the way today. We, we can use the same technique used by all those internet companies. So in CIDA, we redesigned the architecture of a full node to use microservices. We break the fun functionalities of a full node into many independent modules, and each module can run as an independent process. All of those processes can run on, um, each process can run on an independent server. So you can use a server cluster to run a full node. That's very different from um, the full, full node client of other blockchains today because public blockchain client's goal is to have individual run the full node on their laptop. But for enterprise users, <coughs> they can afford a cluster, and they have the operators to maintain the cluster, right? This architecture can fully unleash the resources owned by enterprise users. So in CIDA, we have consensus service, which is in charge of ordering all the transactions received by node. And we have executor um, to process transactions we have authentication service, RPC service, and all the microservices exchange messages with each other through a message bus. Currently, we use RabbitMQ as the message bus between those microservices. So we turn the scale up node, uh, we turn the scale up solution into a scale out solution inside a logical node. What is a logical node? Because in CIDA, a full node is not necessarily a server. So we call, we, we call it a logical node because it may run on a server cluster. So on the right side is a logical node with many servers inside it. From the other full node's point of view, point of view, it doesn't know if the other phone node is, run, is, is running on 10 servers or hundreds of servers. So what's the benefit? If we break the uh, functionalities into independent processes, we can do a lot of concurrent and parallel optimizations. For example, in CIDA we have implemented asynchronous transaction validation and execution. What does it mean? 
Um, when a full node, when a full node receives a new block, the new block will be broadcast to executor and all service at the same time, and all an executor service can optimistically pre-compute the new block and validate transactions in, in the new block. It's a concurrent process, and this change will largely increase the system's um, efficient, uh, efficiency. This is asynchrony in a single block, and we, we go much farther than that. We separate consensus service and executor service completely, so um, when the system load of, uh, is super high, and all the transactions cannot be processed in one block time, which is three seconds in CIDA, the, uh, the execution can last across many blocks, and the state root of the final result will be right back to, will be written back to the block when it's finished, maybe three blocks later. And we uh, also, we also do a lot of parallel optimizations in CIDA. So this is a better picture than previous one, right? Instead of only one service, we can run many service instances for, for any of, of the microservice. We can have three authentication service to validate transaction signatures. We can have three RPC service instances to receive requests from clients. And we can have many executors to run transactions in parallel. So this is, the, uh, this is a benchmark result of CIDA we did one week ago. Um, we, we deployed a network with 10 logical nodes on a cloud service. And uh, the throughput of the 10 node network is 15,000 transactions per second. And in comparison, um, some other blockchain solution, or, the, or the, the most popular blockchain solution today, can reach only 15, 1,500 transactions per second. So it's a 10 times difference. And we found that um, the, the throughput of the whole network will increase proportionally to the, um, to the, to the, uh, to the ability of a single node in the system. Like the, the orange bar, we use a 4x large server, and the blue in, in the blue and red deployment, we use twice powerful hardware. And another interesting uh, thing is we find that the, the blue deployment, uh, it, uh, the, the performance of blue deployment is almost the same as red deployment, but the blue one uses a single server for a logical node, but the red one uses three lower grade servers for a single node, for a single no logical node. So the result is very promising, and all of this is just a beginning. We are still pushing very hard to increase the system's throughput to do more parallelism in CIDA. And actually, the microservice architecture is the only cloud-friendly architecture today, cloud-friendly blockchain architecture today, <coughs> because you can fully utilize the server instances on cloud. We can run many server instances to power a full node. And there are many other interesting designs, and I, I got no, not, not enough time. But, well, uh, we have native contract other than EVM contract. In the default CIDA stack, we support EVM contract by default. But you can always rewrite your Solidity contract with native code, and our native contract 
support Solidity ABI, and it provides Solidity compatible storage API, so you can uh, use mappings, those uh, data structures in native contract. And uh, a Solidity contract can call into native contract naturally without any change. This is an example in Rust. Uh, by the way, CIDA is written in Rust. And uh, the, the, the beautiful of the, the scale-up solution is that the solution is orth orthogonal to all the future sc sc scaling solutions, like sharding, plasma, state channel. We can use them together. And I believe even in um, scalability solution like plasma, the root chain still need very um, very high performance, still need to do a lot of things like we did in CIDA to support all those, all those uh, child chains. And this is a typical network of CIDA. So we build this, ne we, we, we build this network for enterprise users. Each enterprise user can run a full node, which include many microservices, and there users can get access to the network through their full node. This hybrid model, we think this hybrid model deserves more consideration and more research. And we can build decentralized enterprise application on this network. And if you are interested in CIDA, CIDA is fully open sourced, and you, you can find this white paper, it's all of its code, and we build Docker image uh, and we provide some uh, a simple bootstrap document so you can follow the steps and run a CIDA network and benchmark it. We have many customs. Um, yeah, this is why we, 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 we need such high throughput, su such high performance, because our customers include like China banknote printing and minting company. Their product literally has billions of users, right? Thank you.